Right, in this next tutorial, we're going to have a look at the brooding valley of Glencoe. First of all, we're going to look at how we use this little stream as a lead-in. I'm going to change this slightly because you can see it sort of runs in and out of the photograph. We're going to keep that within the photograph. You can see we've got an obvious little focal point with this little cottage at the, the foot of the mountains. And you can see, or you will see in a moment, how we've created a much more brooding overcast day, which is actually much more typical of the way Glencoe weather is than this rather bright, cloudless, uh, sunny day. The other thing is that I want you to see that you can create this very simple bowl effect where you have the mountains almost looking in and dominating the scene and you've got the lead in and taking your eye down this valley way way into the distance. Now the colours that we're going to use are raw umber, permanent rose, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre and titanium white and once again the gel and the glazing medium. Now I've started off by pre-painting the sky and you can see that it's quite a dull colour, it's, it's quite a muted, moody sort of colour. And we've achieved that by simply mixing some of the raw umber with a little of the ultramarine, with the ultramarine dominating here and there, as you can see, slightly blue-grey uh, atmosphere, mixed with quite a lot of titanium white. And notice even on a moody, broody day like this, you'll still have a lightening of the horizon in the distance. So the first thing we're going to do is use the big brush. We're going to fill in the furthermost uh, mountains but we're going to use a little bit of ultramarine blue and white. In fact rather more white than that. Now you can see that I've got that pale blue which is fine but what I'm also going to get is some of that raw umber. Here instead of having a very dark colour with a little smattering of snow we've got a very much a bluey grey colour and that's what I'm trying to recreate all the way through the these two mountains here. Do you see the way by using a limited palette you create this unity because you can't use too many colours. Okay now I'm just going to put that brush down to one side and we'll back up with the palette knife and I'm going to take some of this white and I don't want this to be brilliant white because I don't want too much of that snow uh, in the background coming forward. You can see just a little bit on the reverse of the palette knife. This is still wet so I need to bounce it over reasonably lightly because it's going to mix a little bit with the wet paint. But you can see that it's much lighter, it certainly gives the atmosphere of snow without showing that it's dazzling white snow that you'd get on a, a very bright summer's day. What I'm going to do now is to just carry on with these foreground mountains. Okay now I've scraped in, well more than scraped in, I've troweled in some medium greyish colour, same colours but just a darker strength and same colours again but darker again. I just thought it would be useful if you saw that you don't have to just simply use a palette knife to scrape on uh, snow colour. It's just as effective for putting on this dark round. You can see this is the, uh, the colour we've used. I'm going to get a little bit more of that brown, rather more of the yellow ochre. And I'm just going to take some of the white. Now you can see the way just by dragging this in you'll get some highlights on the surface as you drag it along you'll also create some other blends some beautiful blends that you could never hope to work out in advance I've thrown in a little bit of uh, the permanent rose in that colour if you feel more comfortable with the brush then that's fine here let's uh, we'll use the the number five uh, filbert brush that's going to blend the colours a little bit more than they are on the palette knife Right, I'm just going to finish that off and bring it down with these lighter colours into this area here. Right, well let, having let you see the difference between the brush strokes and the palette knife, I think you'll agree that the palette knife is much more uh, characterful in laying colour 
one colour over the top of each other. I'm just going back now over the, the brush strokes with the palette knife. Right, I'm going to mix now some blue and brown so there's a sort of an archway almost of shadow over here like that. I'm just going to fill this area in here and then we're going to come rapidly down the mountain and start working our way around the focal point which is this little white bothy and then we're going to concentrate on the final third of the painting. Right I just putting in the last few little streaks of added snow. I've dried the paint off slightly now so it's, it's not uh, blending and mixing too much. It's, it's also helping to define and separate the different mountains. Now we're going to have a look at the foreground. I'm going to paint that in in a mix of a yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. I'm going to add a little bit of the permanent rose and the yellow ochre to give that orangey brown heather colour. Just blocking in at this stage. Now I'm going to paint this bothy very very simply. So this wall is going to be light but it's not going to be bright white. Take a little bit of that raw umber and permanent rose. In fact that will work very well. We'll, we'll put a touch of lighter colour over that and it'll give a nice uh, uneven texture which is much more interesting than the boring flat colour it is at the moment. So we're going to create a roof that's a little bit lighter than the background. Well that gives a nice contrast anyway but I'll just take that up the roof slightly so you've got a nice dark contrast that against that. Let's take the small filbert, the number two filbert, and what I'm going to do is just hit and miss my way into this river bank and then skim across with some pale blue paint, basically the same colour as that, just to represent the colour of the sky. Now you can see you've caught me having a bit more fun playing around with the palette knife again. It's, uh, it really is a lovely... Uh, free and easy painting tool to use. You can see I'm just slapping colours on. We just need to paint sideways some ultramarine blue and white. If I can find some space left on the palette, there we go. We'll just take it from there, that's fine. And we're just going to let it hit and miss. You notice I'm keeping those brush strokes quite horizontal so that they do represent that the water is staying nice and flat and level. It's not running uphill or downhill. Now we can go in and get a few little sparkly highlights like that. Now all I'm going to do is to get some grasses with some yellow ochre ultramarine blue, find myself a space, an old brush that's seen better days with all the bristles spread out. Well this is absolutely perfect for this. Just take a few of those bits of grass. It's also picking up some of the other colours that are still wet and slightly unmixed. So we'll just drag out a few a few little grasses like that. And I think that's it. Just a little highlight, one or two of those distant, middle distant hills, just to, to drag the eye forward and create a pathway. The little bothy as the focal point. We've got the lead in of this bubbling little river into and to beyond the bothy. The whole thing takes the eye in this way and then out through here and then up through Glencoe and onwards. Painting a big scene, a big open valley like Glencoe with the towering broody mountains either side can be just as satisfying as painting something that's bright and cheerful. 
Right, now in Glencoe, there are a couple of subtle changes I've made and one quite important one. The subtle changes are that I've improved the whiteness or the lightness of these foreground snowy patches which helps to, to draw the viewer in a little bit better. I've also lightened up and put a little bit more yellow in this centre area here so the eye swings through the picture and out through the valley into the distance. The biggest change I've made and the, well in fact the biggest mistake I made was completely to forget about a cast shadow here for the little cottage which was left looking like it was floating in mid-air. So it's important to remember that whenever you've got buildings if you want to act, or people if you want to anchor them to the ground make sure they've got a shadow. And it's particularly important because quite by accident we've got that light area there next to the dark shadow which really puts a little bit of subtle sunlight just behind the uh, cottage. I've also made some subtle changes to the snow lines here and here but all in all I think what I've done has improved the picture in all sorts of little subtle ways and I've eradicated what was to me a glaring error. Right. We've looked at mountains in the distance and we've looked at rocks in the foreground and I hope you enjoy that process of that thick juicy paint to create all those textures. And remember to create scale in your picture by putting a little tiny figure on a mountain or maybe a small tree. And talking of trees, we're going to move on to trees in the next DVD and we're going to look at all sorts of trees in all seasons of the year and all sorts of different shapes. So as soon as you're ready, you put DVD4 into the DVD player, press play and I'll be ready and waiting for you and we'll go through the process of creating believable trees.